Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Lost in Canada. Uh, so today we'll be watching and reacting on a video about the history of Canada. I think it's a five minute video. Um, and probably it'll be a crash course on the history of Canada. So really excited. Um, let's, let's get to watch. Watching. Watch. Watching. Words. Canada, the second largest country in the world, occupies most of the northern part of North America, covering the vast land area from the United States in the south to the Arctic Circle in the north. It is a country of enormous distances and rich natural resources. Indigenous people lived in what is now Canada for thousands of years before the first Europeans arrived. They are known as the First Nations and the Inuit people. The uh, so, I know this fact. Uh, which previously I didn't know about, uh, was that um, Canada is not just or was not just a white snow-covered land area. No, there were there were people living there for thousands of years, um, especially in the Nova Scotian, you know, province and the region uh, associ like, associated region with it. Um, because I know this, Nova Scotia was not just Nova Scotia. It was a huge area towards the eastern part. I think parts of New Brunswick, Prince Edward Island. So um, the whole eastern shore, the Atlantic provinces, um, there's a lot of lot of uh, First Nations and Inuit people living there. Um, honestly, they're their own land, right? That they that it's their land. Um, but yeah. We, you know, I, I, I was fascinated by the fact. I still have a lot of things to know about the, you know, the, the people. Um, so yeah, getting to know more about it. Just wanted to pop in the first one. Okay. The first European people to come to Canada arrived between 15,000 and 30,000 years ago across a land bridge that joined Asia and North America. Around 1000 AD, the Viking explorer Leif Erikson reached Newfoundland, Canada. He tried to establish a settlement, but it didn't last. In the early 16th century, Europeans started exploring Canada's east. Wait, so someone came before 1500s? News to me. Eastern okay. coast, beginning with John Cabot from England between 1530. Oh, oh, I know this guy. I mean, I know the, his last name, Cabot, not him. Uh, because there's a famous Cabot trail in... Uh, well, the whole Cape Breton island in Nova Scotia. Whoa. He was, he came. Cabot. Okay. Google. Cabot Trail. Uh, Google it. It's, it's a lovely area. I, I was just there like uh, three weeks ago uh, to visit the Skyline Trail. Oh my god. It's so beautiful. Um, but yeah, Google Cabot Trail. 34 and 1542, Jacques Cartier made three voyages across the Atlantic, claiming the land for King Francis I of France. Cartier had two captured guides speak the Iroquoian word Kanata, meaning village. By the 1550s, the name of Canada began appearing on maps. Parts of Canada were settled by France. Now, uh, fun fact, I already knew this, but uh, as they mentioned, Kanata, Kanata uh, the older name of this whole region, well not the whole region, but at least the Ontario part, this whole region, was called Kanata. Um, and then when the settlers came, French and the British, uh, they started using the local names, uh, Kanata, and that somehow made its, you know, transformation into the word Canada, and that's how Canada got its name and parts by Great Britain. In 1605, Port Royal was built in Acadia by the French, led by Samuel de Champlain, and three years later, he started settling Quebec. The French and Aboriginal people collaborated in the vast fur trade economy, driven by the demand for beaver pelts in Europe. Outstanding leaders like Jean Talon, Bishop Laval, and Count Frontenac built a French empire. All these last names I'm aware of. I are North America that reach from Hudson Bay to the Gulf of Mexico. In the 1700s, France and Great Britain battled for control of North America. In 1759, the British defeated the French in the Battle of the Plains of Abraham at Quebec City, marking the end of France's empire in America. The commanders of both armies, Brigadier James Wolfe and the Marquis de Montcalm, were killed leading their troops in battle. Following the war, Great Britain renamed the colony the Province of Quebec. The French-speaking Catholic people, known as Habitants or 
Canadians strove to preserve their way of life in the English-speaking, Protestant-ruled British Empire. After the American Revolutionary War, many people in the new United States wanted to stay loyal to Britain. Thousands came north to Canada and settled in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Quebec, and Ontario. During the War of 1812, oh. the United States tried Okay, so that makes sense. All right. Um, that's why we are still part of the Commonwealth. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. They conquered Canada, but were defeated. In 1867, the province of Canada was joined by two other British colonies of New Brunswick and Nova Scotia through Confederation, forming a self-governing entity named Canada. So I knew about the Confederation, but I didn't know about who joined who and what joined worse. Uh, but yeah, definitely, I know this, that the whole Nova Scotia province was not the modern day. It was, it was bigger and larger than today. <laughs> Canadian soldiers fought in World War I for the British Empire. More Canadians died in this war than any other war. Canada became better known as a country after its success in the capturing of Vimy Ridge from the Germans and France in 1917. Women were given the right to vote by the end of the war, partly because of the help they gave making weapons while the men fought in Europe. In 1931, Canada became fully independent. Then the government of Canada made all decisions about Canada. The British Parliament passed the Statute of Westminster in 1931, which acknowledged Canada as a co-equal with the United Kingdom and the other Commonwealth realms. It was a crucial step in the development of Canada as a separate state in that it provided for nearly complete legislative autonomy from the Parliament of the United Kingdom. The Canadian economy boomed during World War II as its industries manufactured military material for Canada, Britain, China, and the Soviet Union. Despite another conscription crisis in Quebec in 1944, Canada finished the war with a large army and strong economy. In the 1960s, the Quiet Revolution took place in Quebec, overthrowing the old establishment which centered on the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Quebec and led to modernizing of the economy. In the same period, Canada adopted the Maple Leaf flag, although not without considerable debate and misgivings among a large number of English Canadian society. In 1981, the Canadian House of Commons and Senate passed a resolution requesting that the British Parliament enact a package of constitutional amendments which would end the last powers of the British Parliament to legislate for Canada and would create an entirely Canadian process for constitutional amendments. Canada's capital is Ottawa, and its three largest metropolitan areas are Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver. Canada is sparsely populated, the majority of its land area being dominated by forest and tundra. Consequently, its population is highly urbanized, with over 80% of its inhabitants concentrated in large areas and medium-sized cities, many near the southern border. Thank you for watching. Please check out our other animated history shows, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Okay. Wow, okay, I have to say, I did not know a lot of things, but now they're crystal clear. Um, yeah, this was this was good. Uh, I know it was a short video, just five minutes. Uh, didn't really cover a lot of different important parts, probably. Um, but yeah, just for an idea, yeah, this was good. I did not know a lot. Uh, so yeah, um, we will continue our journey for sure, uh, and uh, watch some more informational videos about Canada, the history, uh, the geographic things, and as well. And yes. Um, I know this for a fact that more than 80% of the Canadian population that live in the metropolitan cities or areas, um, you know, the GTA, Greater Toronto Area, the metropolitan area of Montreal and Vancouver. Um, I would say Ottawa and uh, Quebec City as well. They've got populations, I think, of more than two, three hundred thousand people, which is really cool. Um, especially in the eastern part, um, there's just Halifax. Uh, but, yeah, I would say overall, um, even Calgary is good. I don't know why they skipped Calgary, but Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, um, they're really, really cool places to live in. But the rest of the area is, like, not that inhabited. Uh, so people coming from India, especially people like me, uh, who are really daisy in their, uh, you know, living. Um, we find uh, some certain cities really tiny, um, and we are used to, you know, bumping into people. Oh, no. uh, we've got like a billion people there, so um, yeah, 
that's one of the reasons that you know a lot of immigrants, especially they um, they prefer settling into the bigger cities or the bigger metropolitan areas in Canada. Um, so yeah, that's good. I'm probably gonna watch another video, a lot of different videos now, and get to know more about the Canadian history uh, and some geography facts and figures. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned and uh, thank you for joining.